Hi, my name is Juliet, and I welcome you to my channel Intuitive Juliet. And on this episode of the Intuitive Podcast, we are going to talk about my spiritual deep dive on the topic of fear. So how are you doing? Happy Tuesday, everyone. It is now Monday and this episode is based on something very personal and very spiritual. But then again, everything is spiritual. Um, I post an episode every single day if you're new to my channel, um, but we're all going to do it Monday till Friday. So... I wanted to initially have this episode be about something else, but this came up in my personal life and um, it it came up so much that I was questioning so many things about it. And this is a real raw, raw and honest take on fear. Uh, And I truly believe that fear is the enemy, but it's the answer to everything that you want in life. And it is because of my experiences with it, but also because I have heard different spiritual teachers talk about it in such a way that some things were clicking within me and I didn't saw it as clear before. So you know how everybody always says that like this life is love and everybody, everyone is love and everything is based on love and we are we live in a world based on unconditional love and we have free will within that and we hear that and it's beautiful and everybody can kind of agree that yeah love life or at least like life is full of love love is the most important thing in life so you know what i came to find out love is the opposite of fear Which means that fear is the one thing that holds you from your dreams. It's the one thing that holds you back from your dreams. It's the one thing that is withholding your dreams. But it isn't like that. Because fear, right? We always say that we're controlled by our anxiety or we're controlled by fear. We can't do this because we're scared. But Fear is energy. Fear is there because, not because it controls you, but because you give it the power to control you. You believe that it can control you. And also fear is not an indicator of something that is necessarily scary. It is an indicator of something different. Wow. We're going to talk about this and more. Jesus, I'm unpacking it at the beginning so you know what's coming. First of all, I want to say to you that fear isn't natural. Obviously, it belongs to the umbrella of emotions and feelings and stuff. And it's something that we experience, but it isn't a natural response. So when we are faced with new things or different things and we feel fearful because of it, it is... Because we have been conditioned to react like that. If you really think about it, everything in your life has no built-in meaning. Everything is meaningless. Literally, you can choose to react how you would like to react. And we say to everybody that we like certain things, we prefer certain things, but then we still react out of fear to those things, even though we might secretly want to just do them and not be scared. We still react out of this energy of fear. And it is the thing that, well, we grow up with. It's like this whole life is testing us of how far you can go with this. And everything is basically, oh, you need to be uh, safe and secure within a job because you need money. Because otherwise you, you're, you'll become homeless and then you'll die because of the elements Oh, you cannot speak publicly because I've heard from a friend that it's very scary because she got laughed at and because she said something stupid and I don't want that to happen to me. And because I experienced that, um, I don't want it to happen to you. Okay. So why do you go with that? Does it feel nice? Does it feel good? Or is it time to maybe say, 
you know what? It's not the actual incapability and unworthiness and level of skill of me of why I can't do something. It might just be because I'm scared to do something. And it's because it's scary and new and different. You know, let's not label it as scary. Let's just label it as different. Different has less negative connotation than even new. It's different. It's different from what we're used to. Um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. Um, but it, it, it just baffles me how deep this goes. And that is what I mean about love, uh, fear being the opposite of love. And that is the moment that it really struck me. That fear is literally the opposite of everything that you want. And that's crazy. Because it means that, that what is holding you back is just a bit of fear. And if you think about it, most things in your life are literally because... Or aren't happening because you're scared to take some action. But I don't want to get too much into this, um, this side of the topic of... Your fears are here for a reason, because that is very true. And it's sometimes even just to make us see what we do want instead of what we don't want. But I really want to, um, and this is my next thing. Yes, yes, thank you. Very nice segue. Uh, this is my next thing that I wanted to say to you is um, that fear is separate from who you are. And now we go back into conditioning and how we've been conditioned and how everything is trained and learned and taught. And then we deem it as normal because we have been doing it for a longer time. But it's just like when people, they identify with their anxiety too much and they say, oh, I struggle with anxiety and I have been doing so for over 10 years and I need to take these medications to suppress them and keep them there and to numb myself through life and to... Um, God help me to never be able to have a normal social interaction with anyone again because I'm so anxious. And this is not me um, ridiculing your medical situation or your anxiety, medication, whatever. Do what you need to do. But that's the truth of it. Anxiety and fear isn't a part of who you are. Being shy isn't a part of who you are. Because when you were a child, you weren't shy. And... If we want to stay logical in this life and in this world, we might say that how we were born into this world is kind of who we are. But then again, whole other topic, doesn't matter. Were you shy as a kid? Chances are you weren't. And you became shy. It's a different thing. It's not like it's a part of me. But I do get why it's very difficult to go on that road back to yourself because you've been doing it for such a long time it's second it's your nature now you know it's not second nature it's literally it's become your first nature it's become something that you have and you are now so it makes sense that that is how you behave but this is my personal experience with it is that I have had so many anxieties and fears in my past um and it's too many layers to really put it into a one full sentence or even to add it on to this video. Um, but I didn't recognize myself at all. And how I'm behaving right now to me feels very different than I have been behaving. Um, and it's just shown me the level of fear that we carry and how much it influences us and... Yeah, it, it's it's weird how we deem pain to be um, the opposite of love, but pain is just some is a product of fear. Pain could even be a product of love. Fear is what holds us back. Fear is is it's it's all fear. It's all fear. Um. So let's get into how it's separate from you, um, because you know. I have been on a spiritual journey. My everybody has been. Uh, fuck it. 
recently I have become more psychic and I have grown into my abilities and I've been practicing with some people. And um, I kind of figured out that, um, you know, some people would call it an entity or a demon that's hiding within you, but it's not the case. It's just uh, a form of energy that we ha ourselves have created and symbolically it could represent itself as a demon or a negative entity or whatever. Okay. I don't, I'm not saying that I believe in demons. I'm saying that uh, it doesn't matter what you call it because it's the same stuff perceived differently. It's just another truth from a different perspective. So it doesn't really matter. Because, oh, this, this I am going to t tell you though. Um, I had realized a lot of things. Bashar always says that when you have a core belief and you sometimes you realize the beliefs that are above that, sometimes you realize the core belief and then all of the other beliefs that are above that, they crumble down entirely because you have realized something that you are not deeming true anymore for yourself. That is the core belief, right? So I experienced that. Wow. And what I experienced after that was an, a nauseous feeling. I had, I, I hear it now. Do you have a few scary uh, songs on TikTok? And I one came to my mind and it was like I, I had morning sickness. Like I, I don't feel nauseous ever. I, I never puke too. Like I'm not a puker or something. I can keep shit down very well. But I felt so nauseous and like something was surrounding me. And I was like, this is the fear. This is the fear that I have been carrying all of my life. This is the fear that I have been identifying with. Me. Separate from. You know, you hear Eckhart Tolle always talking about how your thoughts are separate from you. And this fucking demon, negative entity, just negative emotion showed me that it's not me. And the more I talk about it, the more, like... I feel chills and like in my mind or in my head and like something is just processing, right? But it showed me like, oh my God, I have been identifying with that fearful being and I have been behaving like that fearful being and I was that fearful being. Whoa, okay, wait, so that isn't me? What do I do now? <laughs> I get to actually live life like how, how I want to. And then it came, keeps coming up and it keeps trying and it keeps. And today is a very bleak day. It, at least it looks like bleak and like it's full of darkness. But it's also kind of like, you know what, Juliet, when are you going to turn the light on? When are you going to look at things differently? Because it's. Yeah, this fear has been keeping you or you have allowed it to keep you stu stuck, like you're stuck. Biggest lie of them all. We'll talk about it in another episode. Like you're stuck, but you can say at any time that you want to move on. And that's what I'm doing. And that, that entire uh, situation just showed me how separate we are from our feelings and that everything in life is temporary and um, how everything is changeable and everything is to be filled in by you. And I also show, I'm, I'm showing love to that fear because it's like, like I was that for a long time. It kept me safe from a lot of things. So, and also the more you hate something, the worse it gets, um, it's like being indifferent, but also showing love to yourself and showing that you just want to be, you're ready for something else. And that's the persistence key. And it's kind of like um, the more you show it, the more you get tested by reality. The more you just show that you're different, the more different experience you are, experiences you are going to get. And it's not, you know what, it's always very simple, but we like to make it difficult in life. And it's very scary. And, you know... It's it, demons have names. This is what I learned from Bashar too. And the names are your names. 
Because they're within you. There's no one else to put the blame on, okay? Um, so fear isn't the enemy either. And that's what I really wanted to uh, build this entire episode around. Fear is the answer. Fear, like love, is the answer. But because love gives answers that we automatically accept because they're true, it's just easier to accept love but it's also very easy to accept fear because fear needs to work so hard so diligent um, to keep you believing it for it to be able to perpetuate itself because it isn't true apparently fear fearful things fearful beliefs fearful thoughts aren't true who would have thought of that huh well Bashar thought of that. Yes, I will be mentioning him a lot, but I like how he explains everything so mechanically. Talk about different people. Don't worry. Not only him. My my database of information is not only him. It's more, and it's also my own. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny how hard it was working within me to literally make me nauseous and, like... It's like it's like you're done with something and it, it's screaming at you to to get you back and then it's your chores to either walk away and it was so comfortable to go back. It was it's so weird how and I think a lot of depressed people or um, people who were depressed and anxious can really relate to this and had it at the level that I ex- experienced is that um, there's a comfort in feeling bad, waking up every day. The immediate reaction to your life is, well, don't want to go out. Victim mentality is a really big one. And I think that's also at the base level of this is this 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 feeling like I was a victim because I realized still I'm adding on the, the thing that I went through in this episode, but just a little bit. The feeling that I um, realized was really that I thought that the world was treating me unfairly, that I was misunderstood, that nobody... I felt disconnected. Like, the disconnection in this connected world was real. Um, And I started just realizing all this stuff, and it all came down to me just not stepping up for myself and saying, you know what? Frick it. I'm going to fricking do what I want to do and claim things and proclaim things and... Follow my passion and what I want to do. Damn it. And I, and then you also realize that the fear that you felt that was keeping you uh, or you were keeping yourself from experiences, you come to realize that even though you wanted maybe things to happen sooner, you realize that you'd rather have them happen with the person you are today than the person you were then. Um, because you're a lot stronger now and you've learned more. And this is also why fear is the answer. You really learn a lot from negative stuff and it's kind of why you're here. Um, but also to get what the fuck you want, obviously. Oh, what the frick you want. Sorry. Um, you know what? I think this is the thing that I want to end on is that if you're in this state of fear and um, especially anxiety, you can feel like this never-ending thing that is just tormenting you. Um, but change is inevitable. And let me tell you why. Based on quantum mechanics, and this is not theory, based on quantum mechanics, you are a literal new person every single moment. Literally. Literally. So there's no like debating this. Anytime you change anything about yourself could be a movement so you're moving through something else you're, you're, you're moving like this could be hey you know what i want to dye my hair dyeing your hair you're a different person or it could be something deeper like you know what i am going to um stick up for myself today just one time and see how it feels look new the new person change is inevitable so we could say that that would be love representative of love And fear is representative of being stuck. And as someone who has a lot of experience of feeling like they're stuck, um, I know how that feels like, that 
even though people, when people say that change is inevitable, you really don't believe it because you, you literally cannot feel that. You literally don't feel like that. Like that is the truth. Um, but if you are literally a new moment, anytime you change anything about yourself or you're literally a new person, then change is inevit- inevitable. And when you feel stuck, you're just, you keep recycling, not recycling, no, you keep changing to a reality that is very similar to your previous one. So you cannot say that you're stuck because you're always literally changing. So you feeling stuck is a lie. You're not stuck. Quantum mechanics doesn't allow you to be stuck. But I do get why some people, because I've always um, thought that want to take measures into their own hands and want to unalive themselves to get unstuck. Yeah, I get why. Um, so let me just summarize a little bit for you. Fear isn't uh, fear isn't natural. It is an emotion, but it is a conditioned response. Because everything in reality is meaningless. So just because you have uh, reacted to scary scary things for in the same way, in a fearful way, doesn't mean that that's normal. It's taught. Fear isn't the enemy. In fear lies a lot of answers. So whether if you start hating it and you start p- putting your... Um, fight and flight and freeze response to it which just makes your body suppress things um you won't find out answers but yeah uh please don't because well you just get meta anxiety fear of the feeling uh fear is just the indicator of something different um big point i just wanted to drive in (laughs) what drive in drive home (laughs) for you is that the the how I found this out is that Bashar said that again, sorry, no fuck it, not sorry. He's a fucking I love him. I love his in information. Um he said that if you would encounter uh, a beast, no, if you would encounter an alien or something, and I've experienced this too because I've encountered a UFO in my garden, um it's something different. It's vibration. And it will uh, raise the vibration, which could be indicated as fear by you because it's something different. And we have learned to respond to different vibrations fearfully. Done. Um, So it's different. It's not scary. Your fear is not you. It's literally not you. So stop it. Um, Oh, I include this anxiety isn't a disorder even though my last uh thumbnail said disorder it's a prolonged state of the body anxiety doesn't belong to you it's not a disorder you were born with it's just a prolonged fight or flight state of your body which suppresses emotions and keep keeps your body into a permanent stress response boom Uh, It's time to separate the fear from you. Fear does not control you, but you have given it permission to control you because it's literally separate from you. Fear is just energy that gets filtered through your belief systems. That's all it is. If things are out of alignment, it could be then perceived as fearful because it's literally out of alignment. Love is the opposite of fear, not pain. Uh, pain isn't the opposite of love fear is the opposite of love sorry I I worded that weirdly thus it's literally the opposite of life whoa she did not everything in the world is a taught response change is inevitable even when you feel stuck and I included this is the last thing the arrogance of humans muggles you know why because they say that some things in life need to have a fearful response but it's just the arrogance of humans who think that just because it has worked for such a long time it needs to stay that way wow johnny that's how real change is made by just saying that thank you so much for watching tuesday's episode and i'll see you tomorrow for another have a great rest of your day thank you so much for watching bye bye